I'm inspired by people. I'm mostly inspired by interactions and just kind of little things that happen that just, it can be anything. It can be the, you know, the tape on the lighting system here I can get inspired by or I can get inspired by riding my horse at the weekends and just seeing a, a bluebell in the forest, you know. I, I, they're very subtle things that, that touch my heart and they're the things that normally start a, a process. My name is Stella McCartney. I'm a fashion designer. I'm probably a fashion designer with a twist in that my brand is a little more than just sort of luxury fashion. I also have quite a responsible, ethical take, twist on the industry. So I look at it in a slightly different way. I'm coming from it at a slightly different angle. I'm also a mother of four, which has an impact on my life. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely an instinctive designer. I work on instincts and I pick up on, you know, if I'm afforded 10 minutes to walk in the street, I kind of absorb. I, I you know, I, I absorb quick and I react quickly because I sort of have to, you know. So yeah, when it comes to the shows, the music I get really involved in, I can't help myself. I work really closely with my DJ and and we just try to have fun with the music. You know, it's an early morning show in Paris. And I'm aware that people want to feel good and they want to wake up and it's the start to their day and I want to lift people, I don't want to bring people down. The girls, the models, I, I very much like to have girls that, are, that yeah, represent me, that I want to be. When they come in, I'm like, oh, I want to be you, you know, I love the way you just came into that room and you haven't washed your hair and, you know, you haven't got any makeup on or, you, yeah, you maybe have your lipstick on from the night before, like, I want to be you. And I like them to have something I can't explain it. I don't overthink it. I think if I overthought things and I went, okay, right, this season I've got to get into the library and I've got to like, I've got to go to every new contemporary show that's on in the museums and I need to know what's happening with the young artists or the young this. If I did that, I think I would be probably forcing something that, that you'd see. You'd see it in my show and you'd be like, what the heck? Who's she trying to be? I trained in a, to be a Savile Row tailor and I worked with men and it was very masculine and very sharp and very traditional and, and I loved it. it and it's brought so much to, to everything I do. Every season I can't get away from it. And then at the same time I have this love of, you know, dusty colours that are aged and delicate and feminine and, you know, the tactileness of just, you know, soft, beautiful materials and prints and you know, or a high heel that's like, you know, it's totally fierce and kind of, it's this mix of things. So I think it's, it's, I'm a person of, of contrast. I've noticed that I'm definitely kind of masculine, feminine, trying to find the moment when, where they meet. As a woman, they're still quite overwhelming moments to know what to wear, I think, if you're going to a friend's wedding or if you're going to something that requires you to, to really take it up a notch. And I love designing evening wear for that. I love looking into how do you want to reflect your personality to people in a brief moment that maybe you've never met them, you'll never see them again. And how do you want to feel when you walk in that room? And how do you want to feel when you're sitting down in that room? Do you want to feel comfortable or do you not really care because you want to look a certain way? Or There's so much that goes into it. And, you know, I don't want to feel like I've got a big ball gown on when I go out. I don't want to feel like an old lady. I don't want to, you know, I want to capture some part of me and, and bring that to the people that I'm meeting in that environment. So I have a real sympathy for women. I, I understand what it's like to be one. So when I create, I take that so much into account, the this, this sort of more emotional side of clothes, the more emotional needs that we have, psychological needs, how it impacts how we dress. And that is a, a huge part of how I work. You know, I, I feel like all of us have that moment in the morning where you're too late and you're like, ah, and you reach for the, you, you know, you reach for the, the old faithful pieces. And for me, I want to provide those for, for my customers. I want to have them available, you know, season after season. And I want them to be timeless and effortless of the highest quality of the most beautiful material. At the same time, I have moments where I want to wear something that's really stand out, that really reflects a different part of my personality, maybe my my sense of humour, maybe my more kind of stronger side, my more confident side, my more masculine side, my more feminine side. So I really tap into that, 
when I design, and, and you know, it's a huge part of the process from A to Z for me. When I'm in a fitting, if I'm wearing something that's on the waist, you know, I try on everything in the fittings, and if I wear something that's on the waist, it, I sit differently. I mean, even talking about it, I, I maybe my posture is different, my, my attitude is just I'm a completely different woman when I, when I do that. If I'm wearing something that's low on the hip, I'm more slouchy and kind of effortless. That's a huge part of how I work. It's not all about a color or a silhouette or just kind of, oh, this is so fabulous and this is so fashiony. I don't really work like that. I, I really work around women and, and their needs. If I could shift the industry, I would definitely get them to be more responsible, to not just think about, you know, a pretty handbag and, and a profit line. You know, that would be the way I would like to shift people's mindsets in the industry, to, to let them know you can have all of that if you're just maybe a little more responsible in the way you approach it. Like that for me is the future of every industry, the food industry, the travel industry, the, you know, tourist industry. It's all like, for me, they're all one thing and we have to, you shouldn't have to compromise it though. You shouldn't have to compromise any of the beauty and the escapism and the glamour and the glitz. It can all still be there. You shouldn't have to compromise any of it. The main thing for me is I don't work with leather or fur or PVC. Over 50 million animals a year that are killed for fashion alone. So there's a big impact. I think there's been, when I was younger growing up, it, there was always this idea that it was a byproduct, that, you know, when you made a nice handbag, it was a byproduct, so it's okay. And the reality is it, it isn't. So, you know, it's not efficient. I guess the biggest way that we, as a brand, are environmentally friendly is we don't buy into the inefficiency of creating leather as a product. PVC is a new one that I, I learned about a few years ago. I actually learned about that through my relationship with Adidas because sports brands actually I find that, that when I work with them it's so cutting edge and so technological it's so much more advanced than the luxury fashion and I love that I love that it's a completely different way of working I work in a very conventional way a lot of the time but I it's more just the mindset the idea of just challenging and trying and you know if one sees and I say, okay, let's look at all the organic materials and, and we get them all and I choose one, I'm like, this is beautiful. This actually looks, you know, luxurious. This looks beautiful. I think people would buy that. I don't, you know, I don't think people really come to brands at this level to buy organic. I think that they have to love the product. So I, I really have to, you know, my job is to create beautiful things first and foremost. You know, the most exciting thing for me is when people don't know. That's when I find it the most kind of rewarding. It's like, you know what, you don't even have to know. We can do this. I can have a healthy business and create, hopefully, an incredible product without you guys even knowing it's not leather. I've always been inspired by my mum. It was a huge inspiration for me. And again, it was more just the, the kind of person that she was. I mean, it was two-sided, double-sided. I think the fact that she started on in a style sense i think she was really before her time she was just way ahead of herself she would cut her own hair and she wore very little makeup and she would mix a 1930s tea dress with a pair of argyle socks and you know sneakers she just had this kind of great um inner confidence about how she dressed actually and again the kind of subtle sense of humor and a little idea of not caring too much. And unfortunately, I wasn't a mum, you know, when she was around. So I didn't sit and go, what's it like being a mum? But the, I mean, just what I learned from her was just to be, just give out a ton of love unconditionally. You know, just go with the flow, allow things to happen. Try and sympathize 